A Minatrista, Minnesota woman, is living proof that good things come to those who wait. And this is all out of one piece of wood. Yes, it is. In fact, I hauled the single piece of wood um, for 25 years before the loon was the designated species for the world championship. And why did you haul it around so long? Well, because I knew I was going to need this piece of wood when, when I could actually carve the loon for the world championships. She used her carving skills that she'd been honing since the 1980s and parlayed her talent into that of a world-class champion. And this is the granddaddy of them all, huh? This is um, the loon that won third in the world and made me a world champion in 2011. Oh I'm my Officially word. a master carver. The first clue to Lori's talent came early when she took Best of Show Award on the very first decoy she ever carved. It was a redhead trach that I'd taken down to the international decoy contest. I'd been challenged. The head really sells the duck, doesn't it? It really does. Um, a, a decoy with a good head and a so-so body will prevail over a body that's done perfectly with a not so great head. Mm -hmm. So the head is very important for confirmation of species. Creative carving is a challenge, but painting the birds is also a big part of the process. Th that's what's so wonderful about this medium. You get to do so many different things. I get to play with clay, making a clay model. I get to design and do technical engineering through the pattern making, and then I get to transfer all of that into wood I get to carve, I get to create feathers and texture them, and then my very favorite part and where I really excel is, is my painting skills. Laurie, what if you make a mistake? How do you correct it? It looks like it would be difficult to, cor to correct. Well, with this acrylic paint, it's deco art paint, it allows me to come back with a clean, wet brush, and then I can, even hours later, come back and remove any paint that I didn't like or was too have, heavy. Will it have the same smooth effect to it or would, would you use some sort of a detailer or a wood burning? No, what I'll do is, all I do is I come back and I clean and clean up all these scallops. What kind of wood are you using here? Tupelo. Tupelo. It grows in the bayous of Mississippi and Louisiana. Um, this is out of Louisiana. See, I've heard that one of the best is basswood, so I've been using a lot of basswood to carve. Do you ever use basswood? I don't use basswood because I only use power tools, and basswood gets really fuzzy when you use power tools. So how many hours does she put into one carving? So I would imagine people always say, well, how long did it take you to carve such and such a duck or a goose or a loon or whatever? Do you keep track of those things? I do. And one of the, one of the things that I do say is they'll ask me, how long did it take you to carve that loon you did in 2011? And I say, nine months and 25 years of experience because I couldn't have done it without the experience. This is also um, Tupelo. It's um, carved from a single piece of tupelo. This award winner? It is an award winner. And I created a rubber tail. Is that legal to do in a competition? It is legal to do in competition, and it's also smart to do if you're ever going to hunt over a decoy like that. Then there's the question, what's the most money she's ever been paid for a single carving? $20,000. $20,000 for or, one carving? Right. <laughs> so you're saying to yourself, what if she makes a mistake? Well, you don't make any mistakes. When I do make mistakes. Well, when I'm carving from a single piece of wood, you only have one shot. This is why I use the clay models, because I'm able to look at the clay model, measure from the clay model, and, and transfer all those measurements accordingly. The other secret is working very slowly on very uh, delicate areas. Well, there is a... Uh, special powder that I add to the uh, acrylic paint that gives the iridescent sheen and replicates what you'd see on the live bird, the purple of the yeah, crest. Yeah, you put a little tint of purple and a little mm -hmm. tint of green and And then that supporting blue. iridescent um, color makes that It really happen. brings it out, doesn't it? It really does. It's kind of fun to see. Oh, man. This had to win an award. 
this is actually a piece I just finished. You just finished it's it? It's for sale. <laughs> it's for sale? Well, it yeah. will win an award, and then it, it will. will be worth more. It will. Lori's hope is for this form of wildlife sculpture to be recognized by the art world as the significant and important art form it has become. R.J. Fritz, out and about for Life to the Max. Life to the Max is brought to you by LifeTouch, photography for a lifetime.